Applying Kirchhoff's current law to the node labeled n plus 1, we get the following terms. We have the current I, Z, T, remember we're using capital I and V, flowing into that node. We have the current I, Z plus delta T flowing out of the node. And then we have the current voltage relationship for a capacitor here is C dV dt is equal to I. Now the capacitance of a capacitor is in units of farads, but the capaci capacitance of the transmission line equivalent circuit C prime is in units of capacitance per unit length. So therefore, in the KCL equation, we're going to need to multiply C prime by delta Z to get the total capacitance for one equivalent circuit. So we're going to put that in here for C. Also, the dVdt term will be written out as a partial derivative. So this, we're going to have partial dVdt because in the case of the transmission line, the voltage is a function of two variables, space and time, rather than just being a function of one variable, time. Then we have the conductance. The conduct conductance is the inverse of the resistance, so 1 over R, Siemens. Thus the current voltage relationship for the shunt resistor is I is equal to G times V. As we have seen uh, for the capacitance, the conductance of the transmission line is in units of Siemens per meter, so we are going to have to multiply G prime, oops, G prime, by delta Z and plug that in here for G in order to get the total conductance. Putting all this together, we have the equation that's written on the top of this screen. Now in our analysis so far, the transmission line segments are infinitesimally short. So to apply this equation to real life transmission line transmission lines, let's clean up this equation and convert all of the terms to continuous space rather than discretized space as we have here. First, spend a minute grouping like terms. Current terms on the left and put voltage terms on the right. <laughs> 